fast groom for disabled, senior, or impatient dogs. There are many reasons why you might wish to get a groom done as quickly as possible. For example, you might be handling a dog that is suffering some sort of disability, an illness, an injury, or a senior dog who just isn't up to the physical exertion that a groom can entail. The grooming motto should always be humanity over vanity. And I guess sometimes we all need to remind ourselves that it is much better to reduce the quality of a haircut in terms of our personal aesthetics if we gain in the practicality of a haircut. I love a beautiful haircut. In fact, that's one of the reasons that I started grooming my dogs at home myself. But the dog enjoying the grooming experience and being comfortable is by far my most important objective. And I find that almost all at-home groomers feel this way as well. As our dogs age, they lose the ability to stand for extended periods. Their skin becomes thinner and more delicate, and their circulatory systems do not function like they once did. This increases the risk for infection, cuts, and burns, and other potential hazards of grooming. Our dogs can also suffer from illnesses like diabetes, seizure disorders, heart disease, limb dysfunctions. I mean, you name it, dogs can get it. Man's best friend suffers many of the same diseases and accidents that humans do. If you find that you are responsible for a dog like this, you may wish to groom at home to increase the comfort and support to your dog. If you have extra helpful hands around, it's always useful to have more than one person gently brushing out the coat a bit before your clip. Ensure that your dog is comfortable with your family and the grooming experience before enlisting help for brushing in particular. A dog that is a new rescue or feeling really anxious or might be new to your family, they may become overwhelmed with two people brushing at the same time. And with rescues and new to you dogs, you generally want to take things really nice and slow. And see what works best for your situation. And also tell us down in the comment section because I'd love to hear what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Test out pin brushes on your own delicate skin just so that you get an idea of how hard you should be pressing. Pin brushes can hurt the dog, and when you are dealing with a dog that might have health problems, you want to be extra sure that you do not create any damage to the skin. Start on the trunk and comb out as much dead hair as possible. If your dog does not shed much, this step will go by very quickly. Combing out the coat will, of course, help the clippers glide through, and ideally your dog should be brushed out even before you get in the bathtub but it also helps the coat to kind of dry and air out, so you're gonna get a lot of drying done just over time while you're brushing and clipping out the dog. Dogs that have recently given birth will blow their coat, and so this hair fall needs to be brushed out in the first couple post-birth grooming sessions. It's really not a lot, but I also brush her pretty regularly. She likes that, so, but you'll see some hair coming out. Dogs that have recently undergone any major illness or stressful experiences like surgery are very likely to lose a lot of coat. So if this is the case for your dog, make sure you gently remove all fallen coat and improve the airflow and structure of the remaining living coat. This isn't anything to be terribly concerned about. This actually happens to people also. Take care not to pull the skin too much. Some dogs have looser skin due to their breed. In this case, you will notice there's a lot of loose skin because Mama was a veritable furry balloon before she had her litter. So of course, you know, things take a little time to get back to normal. This is Sweet Pea. She is very distracted, as you can see. She wants to get to her seven new puppies. Since she has recently given birth, she might be sore and tired, and of course, she doesn't want to spend a lot of time on the table staring at me, and therefore, she's a bit anxious. She wants to get back to her babies. Hey, you know, sometimes moms will really enjoy, like, a nice spa day, kind of getting pampered and having one-on-one -on -one time with me, but other times, they're really in love with their new babies, and they want nothing to do with me. They've forgotten all about how fun I am, and they just get really anxious and want to get back to their babies. And so I just sort of adjust what I do depending on my mom. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and give Sweet Pea a real quick turnaround. So there are a few ways that you can reduce the time that you're spending on your dog without reducing the quality of the groom. For example, you can reduce time in the bathtub by bathing your dog about halfway between grooming sessions. So if you normally groom your dog every six weeks, then three weeks after that groom, give your dog a nice shampoo and condition and dry. 
And that way, when you do get to your six week grooming session where you're including that haircut, you won't need to double wash the dog. You won't have to spend a whole lot of time in the bathtub trying to get any kind of dirt or grease out because the dog's been regularly bathed. And every, every three weeks for a bath is generally a pretty good schedule anyway. You could go more frequently, but with an older dog, you probably don't want to. You really probably want to keep it at a minimum for their sake. Of course, bathe in between if you go out and get muddy or anything like that. Also, if you skip the rinse out conditioner and use a leave-in instead, you can get done even faster. Another way you can cut down on time is to skip drying the dog with a blow dryer and go straight from the towel to clipping the coat. You can do this with most clippers. Most clippers are rated as wet slash dry clippers. You can clip the coat while it's still all sudsed up with shampoo and the dog is still in the tub. The shampoo will help the clippers glide more easily through the coat. Uh, you just have to make sure that the tub doesn't have any water in it because you are using an electrical equipment. You could use a cordless clipper, but I find that cordless clippers don't go through the coat very well. I personally don't like to do things this way because I find the dog shivers a lot more. And if I can towel dry the dog really well and work up on the table with more space around me and the dog, I can get the job done a lot faster and with greater comfort to the dog in general. You might find that you prefer to clip out the bulk of the coat while still soapy and in the tub, so it doesn't hurt to give it a try. In this video, I'm using a six millimeter blade. I really don't like going shorter, except around the bum and the genital area where I might use a seven or a 10 blade, which I believe are three millimeter and 1.6 millimeter respectively. With short blades, you run the risk of cutting or razor burning a dog when you're really trying to move super fast. So maybe you're not being as careful because you're just going quickly. And if you add to that a dog that might be in pain or might otherwise be antsy or eager to get off the table, you're just asking for injury. You can see from this groom that a six millimeter cut really is pretty short anyway. You will want to adjust the coat length to what is comfortable for your dog. Elderly dogs tend to get cold easily while overweight dogs get too hot. It is always easier to make a chilled dog warmer than it is to cool a hot dog off. So I like to make the groom as short as comfortably possible. This allows you to go a lot longer between grooming sessions and brushing sessions are easier on the dog as well. This also keeps the dog a lot cleaner, which is, to me, a really important thing. If your dog has any trouble with balance or mobility, you may find bathroom breaks a lot messier than they used to be. Keeping things clean is a must for a healthy dog. You want to allow the dog to sit in a comfortable position as much as possible, but this will mean that you have to gently stretch out any loose skin, especially near the bum and the hind legs. When the dog is standing up, their skin is stretched out and taut, and so you really aren't going to catch any little skin rolls with the clippers unless the dog has genetically has a lot of extra skin. So if you're allowing the dog to sit down, you want to make sure that you are pulling any loose skin nice and taut so that you don't catch any skin rolls. Damp hair will lay down really quickly and easily. It won't stand up nicely for trimming the way that dry fur will. So you may want to gently grab the tips of the hair and lift them up a bit as you glide the clipper along the coat. It is imperative that you do not ever pull the skin, even the smallest amount when you lift the coat like that. You can pull the skin right into the clipper blades if you, if you pull at all. So gentle is the name of the game. Do not tug on the skin. Anytime you're scissoring or clipping a dog, you want to be extraordinarily careful not to pull the skin into the blades by mistake. Trim the sanitary area nice and short. Always be careful with a squirmy dog because you do not want to nick them. That's a sensitive area and of course that if any place is going to get an infection, that would be the spot. So make sure that you are extremely careful in this area. Remember that if you are going to go ahead and cut the fur really short, shorter than the rest of the body, this might cause the dog to look sort of short from the side. It may look like the dog has a strange shaped back leg, like maybe their back leg is a little thinner than it should be. That's just because of the hair being shorter right there. The proportions seem off to you, but again, it's humanity over vanity and we want to keep things nice and sanitary. So clip up the underside of the tail and all around that back area and your dog will have a much cleaner rear end. So after you're done grooming all of the dog minus the head and the face, you can gently blow dry the remaining dampness out of the coat. This is going to take a delightfully short amount of time, which you and the dog will both appreciate. And of course, when you're all done and everything's all fluffed out, you'll notice a few uneven patches here and there. So you're just going to skim over that coat again with the same length clippers, but this will be done in no time at all.
Now you're going to let the dog sit and lay down as much as possible, but there are going to be times that you just have to have the dog standing in order to get to the coat, right? You're not going to get the legs very well if the dog is laying on them. It is really helpful if you just have an extra pair of hands to kind of put their arms in and hold the dog underneath or just give the dog someone to lean their body weight into. You can see in this case, letting Sweet Pea have her favorite teenager around really did help her focus less on her desire to get back to her fat little puppies. So it was nice to have her around to help out. If you do have a senior dog that is a bit bigger and heavier or you don't have someone to help you out, you can buy a sling or a harness that will hold the dog's body up and allow you to get the legs where the dog can really rest a lot of their weight into that sling and that is super duper helpful as well because old dogs and disabled dogs need haircuts too. Whenever you have an especially licky dog like you see here with Sweet Pea, she's always got her face and her nose and everything. She likes to sniff everything and she loves mouthing absolutely everything. You have to be extremely careful when the dog puts her face near the scissors. It only takes one second for a tongue to flick out and lick an extremely sharp blade. So make sure that you watch very closely and keep scissors as far away from the mouth as possible. When you are down around the mouth, try to close the muzzle. Don't do too much pressure because the dog will jerk harder. The harder you squeeze, the harder the dog will fight you. So try to make sure that you're holding everything gently, but keep that tongue away from the blades and that little soft nosy nose too. Keeping your table clean as you go will ensure that your table has the right amount of traction for your dog, which again might not have great balance in the first place. And also it'll help prevent cut chunks of hair from getting squished up in between your dog's toes. Whenever you've got a dog like this where you shouldn't be lifting the paws up all the time or as minimally as possible. You just want to make sure that everything stays nice and clean. For grooming the belly, you can roll the dog over onto her back and clip. Make sure that the dog is comfortable doing this. You can have some extra hands around here to help if you want to do it up on the table. It's really nerve wracking to lay down and stretch out on a tall and narrow surface like a grooming table. Uh, I've never met a dog that actually did didn't mind doing this. So if you're at home, you can always do this down on a clean bit of floor. That will make the dog a lot more comfortable. Otherwise, just if you can, have other hands around to sort of talk gently to the dog and let the dog feel like they're surrounded by people and not going to go flying off the table because they can't really see what's going on. And I always like to finish up with some treats, um, especially for a food motivated dog. This is a really great way to end the grooming session. And then you can get your doggo off the table and back to doing whatever it is that she loves, which is probably taking a nap.